Hey there, Beyblade fans. I'm Zesty Fresh, and I'm here to answer the question, what is Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle? Dynamite Battle is the Beyblade Burst series released in 2021 in Japan and is the counterpart to the Beyblade Burst Quad Drive series released by Hasbro in 2022 in North America. In Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle, Beyblades are made up of a combination of parts. This is the Beyblade series that comes with the most com or the highest combination of parts to put together your bay, as well as bays come in a variety of different levels of parts. So uh, up here with our uh, Belial, we've got one of the gears that Belial comes with. Belial has a number of gears. We have, so you've got a chip, an armor, a ring, a gear, a weight disc, and a driver. Greatest Raphael is a combination of several of these parts for just the top, then a weight disc and a driver. This is the most basic and what you might be useful to if you're dealing with Beyblade Burst already is a weight or a energy layer, weight disc, driver, that's standard Beyblade. And then over at the bottom here, we've got the Cyclone uh, Ragnarok, and that is going to be the, the normal for Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle. It is a chip, armor, layer, weight disc, and driver. So in this series, your bays have a couple of modes that are optional. And so you've got your high mode and your low mode, and then depending on what parts you have, parts like Venture, Nexus, and Dynamite can have the gears, which can bring you from plus S, plus V, plus F, or up to perfect. And perfect is when you have all of the gears attached to one of the bays, such as Dynamite, Devil, or Dangerous. So looking at the parts, the chip is going to be where your teeth are and will determine your teeth-based gimmick. So if there is a teeth-based gimmick or depending on how your teeth are, that is always going to be in the chip. Unless, of course, your greatest Raphael, that is in the layer as standard Beyblade Burst. The chip itself will not produce too much of the weight and is just going to handle how burst resistant you are. The armor is going to come in a variety of different styles. So these armors can be triangular, they can be hexagonal, they can come in a more oval pattern, and those are going to redistribute your weight a little bit in your energy layer, and it'll change up a little bit of how you perform. It's minor, but it is slightly significant to when you're starting to min-max or really try to win tournaments, knowing what armor to pick and what works well with what is going to be a very important aspect of this series. Your layer is going to be the contact points and is going to very much change what type of bay you're interacting with. So you can have stamina types or you can have attack types. So this, this dynamite is going to be that triangular attack type, more likely to deal more damage, where cyclone is going to be that oval, a uh, stamina type oval, so it's rounded sides, ovular, and all about buffering out your opponents. Gears are going to enhance a part so there is a variety of different gears and there will be a gears episode available later that you can check out all of the gears. Your weight disc is going to produce the heft of your bay and will be the greatest change in how much your bay weighs. Changes in weight will change your stamina, your defense, your attack potential, as well as your agility, uh, knockout resistance and other features like that. So the weight disc can be really important and it's not always just about what weight disc is heaviest. There's going to be all sorts of different features related to that. Your driver will change how much your bay moves for the most part. So the movement style of your bay is going to be very much controlled by the driver. This venture driver is much more of an attack style driver with a little bit of braking, where Extend Plus has a variety of different modes between attack, stamina, and defense. And Never is a purely just stamina style base. So standard to Beyblade Burst, or if, but if you're new to Beyblade, this is all about the kind of combinations that can exist within a Bay product, and really, there's a lot of combinations, there's a lot of thought to go into it, and if you're starting to get into competitions and tournaments, there's a lot to really think about when you're trying to put it all together. In Dynamite Battle, there are essentially two modes that your bays are going to come with. There is high mode, and there is low mode. So we're going to check out low mode here with Belial. Low mode is you take the chip and you put it on top of your ring or your layer and you take the armor and you slip it in below. That clips in and then you can lock your chip in place and that will then give you your low mode layer. When in low mode, 
you take the weight disc and the, you can see there is no gap between the weight disc and the actual layer. When you're in this combination, that reduces your center of gravity to a lower point. This is usually preferred as it increases your resistance to bursting. So the lower you are, you're tighter and you're more likely to resist bursting. So that has been the preferred style that a lot of bladers have been using. There is some advantages to being in high mode as well, but they tend to be thought of to outweigh, be outweighed by just the resistance and lower center of gravity from the low mode. Altogether, it will be a very tight combination and look pretty much like you're used to when looking at bays. When you're in high mode, we can look at Greatest Raphael here and how you would interact with if you were to use dynamite battle parts on any type of layer outside of the dynamite system. Locking it in, there's going to be a huge gap between the weight disc and the layer. And you can see that distance there. And that is what the high mode is. So if you use anything outside of Dynamite Battle or if you use particularly Greatest Raphael from Dynamite Battle that is an integrated layer, you can only be in high mode and that's going to give you that high gap. It's going to change the center of gravity as well as uh, give you a little bit more room to tilt. So changes like that, I think this actually works better for attack tights for the most part when you're looking for that knockout power because when you're lower down, you're not getting as much heft between your movement that when you're higher up and your ability to spin is going to push that weight out more and it's going to give you a little bit more damage in your attack type. So when I use attack types, I try and go towards high mode unless their teeth are bad. And if the teeth of your combination is bad, you don't want to be in high mode because that is going to cause easier bursts due to the reduced uh, recoil or increased recoil rate. When you're dealing with a dynamite style bay, to go into high mode, it's just the opposite of low mode. So the armor goes in on the top of the layer. The chip slots in underneath. When you're in low mode, you can tell because you can see the armor, where in the low mode, you cannot. So high mode, see armor, low mode, no armor, and you got the color from the chip. So in this one, you can't see the blue from the chip because it's in high mode. The weight disc will slot in and again give you that gap that we saw with Greatest Raphael. And then this driver goes in to finally create that combination. So it's not a significant difference between high mode and low mode. Like the bays are pretty much covering the same amount of distance. But you can see that the layer is quite a bit lower. And when it will make contact, it will scrape at different points. So knowing the advantage and where you want your points to be compared to your opponents can be very important when you're designing your combination. In low mode, when you have slanted points like this, slanted wings perform better when they're lower down. So if you are in low mode and you're up against a high mode opponent with and you have slanted wings, you're gonna be at a better location. So you're lower down more often and you're more likely to be able to destabilize them, which is what you're going for there. So thinking about that is very important. Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle is reportedly going to be the last of Beyblade Burst. I'm hoping it's not. I hope we get another season. Uh, but the bays from it are awesome. They're fantastic combinations. There's so many of them. I'll have to bust out my whole collection and do a video on all of the <laughs> Dynamite Battle bays that I have but uh, the combinations, the intricacies of this system is really interesting and really fun. I think if you're getting into Beyblade Burst right now, it's an excellent time to do so. And if this is the last season of Beyblade Burst, that means Dynamite Battle is going to be a series that you're going to see used for many years to come, because I don't think Beyblade tournaments and Beyblade battles are going to go away if the season ends. I think it's just they're going to focus around the ones that are available and the best ones available right now our Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle. Thanks for so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you love this content, check out this other video where we go into a Beyblade Burst Dynamite Battle tournament. The tournament was a lot of fun to make and I really hope you guys enjoy it.